the National Security Council did meet recently to discuss how to respond about this intelligence that the Russians were paying bounties to kill U.S. troops in Afghanistan. But the White House maintains that President Trump was never made aware of those discussions. There was not a consensus among the intelligence community. and In fact, there were dissenting opinions within the intelligence community, and it would not be elevated uh, to the president until it was verified. What we need to know is the intelligence perspective. So I am therefore urging uh, the White House uh, and the chief of staff to follow up on my request to make sure that we are briefed uh, by the intelligence community directly so that we can get to the bottom of this. Uh, I'm sure that Mr. Schiff will be following up on this through the Intel Committee, uh, as I have urged him uh, to do. We need to hear from the heads of the intelligence agencies um, about how they assess the allegations uh, that have been made publicly. Um, what can they tell us about the truth or falsity of these allegations? What can they tell us about steps they are undertaking or have undertaken uh, to vet uh, any information that they may have? As we look at these, and I'm going to call them allegations because I can't confirm or deny uh, any underlying intelligence. Uh, as we look at these allegations, um, number one, the President of the United States should not be inviting Russia into the G7 or G8. Um, uh, we should be considering what sanctions are appropriate uh, to further deter Russia's malign activities, um, not uh, further ingratiating Russia into the community of civilized nations. Um, and I find it inexplicable in light of these very public allegations that the president hasn't come before the country uh, and assured the American people that he will get to the bottom of whether Russians are putting a bounty on the heads of American troops and that he will do everything in his power to make sure that we protect American troops. I do not understand for a moment why the president isn't saying this to the American people right now and is relying on, I don't know, I haven't heard, I haven't been briefed. Uh, that's just not excusable. There may be a reluctance to brief the president on things he doesn't want to hear. Uh, and that may be more true uh, with respect to Putin and Putin's Russia than with respect to any other subject matter. Uh, many of us do not understand his affinity for that autocratic ruler who means our nation ill. Thank you very much, Mr. Schiff. Uh, but now let me recognize the chairman of the uh, uh, Foreign Affairs Committee, Mr. Engel. Uh, I, I think the, the words of uh, Mr. Schiff is, is something that all of us left the White House thinking about um, and scratching our heads. It, it, it makes no sense whatsoever for the President and the administration not to call out Putin. I don't understand what it is with the President's infatuation with Putin. Why isn't the President condemning Putin? or at least questioning what, what happened, or demanding an answer from Russia, demanding an answer from Putin, talking about the things that Putin has done. When it, when it comes to uh, Vladimir Putin, this, this president just seems to think that he's the greatest thing going. Why doesn't the president question Putin? Why doesn't the president condemn what Putin has done? As I think all of you know, uh, the central issue in this case was whether or not Russia is paying bounties uh, to the Taliban for the purposes of uh, killing American uh, armed services personnel or civilians. This was a red flag. It either was not waived or the president ignored the wave. President Truman said the buck stops here. President Trump says I never saw the buck. <laughs> and we need to make sure that the members of Congress and the American public understand whether or not our relationship with the Soviet Union, excuse me, with Russia, uh, is compromised by the relationship uh, between the president and Mr. Putin. That is a danger to our country if that is the case. Let me again quote John Bolton said this weekend that there is no conceivable way that the president was not briefed on a matter of such importance.
say about the intelligence? Like, did they, what was their explanation for it? How did they describe it? And what was their interpretation of the intelligence? I'm going to yield to Mr. Schiff. And the reason I'm going to yield to Mr. Schiff is not because I don't have an answer, but he is much more sophisticated in what answer we can give. <laughs> I would certainly put this in the category that if you're going to be on the phone with Vladimir Putin, this is something you ought to know. Uh, whether it's caveated or not, this is something you ought to know. Uh, but I, I would certainly concur with the assessment that um, if the intelligence community had intel along the lines that is publicly reported um, and the president is getting on the phone with Vladimir Putin time after time after time, uh, and is welcoming Putin to the United States and back in the G8, uh, this is information I think would be negligent to keep from him. It is made, as I pointed out to uh, Mr. Meadows, uh, much more serious because of the uh, relationship, whatever that might be, but it is not something that we are very confident of between our president and Mr. Putin. Uh, and in that context, I think it would be incumbent upon the White House uh, to comply with the requests of Speaker Pelosi and Leader Schumer uh, to brief the entire uh, caucus. I left the White House uh, with the uh, impression, and the president has said he was not briefed. There is, uh, Mr. Meadows clearly gave the impression that he believed this was a very serious matter if, in fact, there was a threat made to our troops and the Russians facilitated uh, that action uh, so that there was an assertion of that. I, I, I come away from that saying, if that's the case, why was the president not briefed if, in fact, he was not? Thank you all very much. Uh, I'm looking at shifts well, <laughs> because I, I don't want to say something that I'm, you know, he, he knows the rules on what you're going to say. Well, I, um, before he talks to Putin, it needs to be shared with him. It needs to be shared with him in the, in the form that he takes it. Um, and, and that's all I can say. I, think on I that agree. Subject. Absolutely. With Mr. Ship. Our focus was what did the president know and when did he know it? The idea that somehow he didn't know or isn't being briefed, it is a dereliction of duty if that's the case. And if he was briefed and nothing was done about this, that's a dereliction of duty. I guess the best way for me to end this is I was talking to Jill, I'm my wife Jill, and I don't see her get outraged very often. She started asking, she said, Jill, what would you have done? if Bo was still in harm's way and this information came out and the president, Bo was my son who was in, I'm sorry, I apologize, who was served in Iraq for a year, was in the army. But if he'd been in Afghanistan, what would you do, Joe? What are those parents thinking out there? What are those sons and daughters, husbands and wives? It's an absolute dereliction of duty. If every, any of this is even remotely true. So I think the president has a lot to answer for and should get the answers quickly, quickly. What consequences should he face if these allegations are true or if these reports are true? If, there, if these allegations are true and he did nothing about any of this, then in fact, I think the, the, the public should, unrelated to my running, conclude that this man isn't fit to be president of the United States of America. This is as bad as it gets. And yet the president will not confront the Russians on this score, denies being briefed. With him, all roads lead to Putin. A spokesperson for Russian President Vladimir Putin used some choice words today to deny the reports. This is a 100% bull****. It's, it's non-diplomatic thing, but it's a bull****.